Every day, I take at least one walk around North Manchester. Every day, summer, fall, winter, spring. It is on days like these, in times like these, that I am grateful to live in a small town. But not just any small town, this town, North Manchester. In the last stretch of months before the sheltering in place orders and all the restrictions that accompany them, I've had some interactions with old friends, persons from my childhood. The usual questions include, where are you right now? And I say, Northeast Indiana, a small town west of Fort Wayne, North Manchester to be specific. Not many know where it is, and that's okay. But I do find myself explaining it using data very specific information. We're between Warsaw to the north and Wabash to the south. We have about 6,000 residents. You know, small but not too small to lack services. Just three stoplights total. And basically two primary streets, Main Street that runs east and west, Market Street which runs north and south. I might as well give them the coordinates as well, 41 degrees north and 85 degrees west in your smartphone GPS. But on days like these in the month of May, bleeding into June, and in times like these that ask for more, I think it's okay to also be a bit more poetic. So I might say, I live in North Manchester, on the banks of the gentle Eel River or Kinapokomoko, where residents and visitors can paddle and float through tall sycamore and oak trees that have silently witnessed the vagaries of life over the decades, even the centuries. Or I might say, I live in North Manchester where trees line the streets, giving shade and witness to the lives of children who strive to grow up and become caring and capable adults. Or, I live in North Manchester, where we both succeed and fail to be a community filled with genuine hospitality and welcome. There are so many ways to describe where we live, or where we dwell, other than simply using data. This may be a bit presumptuous of me to say, but I wonder if we live in North Manchester, home of more peace poles per capita than any other Indiana town. Again, that leans into data, but these poles are a symbol, a witness to the yearnings of many who reside here. And to say we have more of a few, more than a few, would be a bit of an understatement. These cedar poles, filled with a simple statement, offered in more than a dozen languages, are not only a witness and a symbol but a doorway to consider what prompts so many to plant peace in their yard or place of worship or educational campus or senior living community. I'll leave that motivation and ethic imagination to you. For now, here are some readings and scripture texts that accompany this daily walk around North Manchester as it blooms with abundance. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who live with you. Peace within your walls and security within your towers. For the sake of my relatives and friends, I will say, peace be within you. Psalm 122. To dwell in a peaceful land with right desires in one's heart. This is the greatest blessing control of self and peaceful speech and whatever word be well spoken. This is the greatest blessing. To live righteously, to give help to kindred, to follow a peaceful calling. This is the greatest blessing. Words of the Buddha. May peace reign on earth. May the gourd and the pot agree. May their animals live in harmony and all evil words be banished into the bush and the vacant forest. A prayer from Guinea. You have heard that it was said to men of old, you shall not kill. 
and whoever kills shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother shall be liable to the council. And whoever says, you fool, shall be liable to the hell of fire. The Gospel of Matthew. Shall I not tell you what is better than prayers and fasting and giving alms to the poor? It is making peace between one another. Enmity and malice destroy all virtues. The words of Muhammad. But the wisdom from above is pure, first all. It is also peaceful, gentle, and friendly. It is full of compassion and produces a harvest of good deeds. It is free from prejudice and hypocrisy. And goodness is the harvest that is produced from the seeds the peacemakers plant in peace. The Book of James. Would that even today you know the things that make for peace. The Gospel of Luke. True peace is not merely the absence of tension. It is the presence of justice. Martin Luther King, Jr. May wise submission conquer disobedience in this place. And may peace triumph over discord here and generosity over greed, reverence over blasphemy, truthful speech over lying words. May the righteous order gain victory over the lie. Zoroastrian Scriptures. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, the prophet Isaiah. We are one, after all, you and I. Together we suffer, together exist, and forever will recreate each other. Pierre Taylor de Chardin. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall feed, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The suckling child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the earth. Prophet Isaiah Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of John. Peace to all of you at Timbercrest. Peace in your heart and soul and mind and strength. And peace be between us as we keep in our mind's eye and heart the day we meet again. May it be so, now, here, and always. Amen.